You're listening to the Inquisitive Red Podcast, the show that brings you philosophical ponderings of your life from a bird's eye view. Now, here's your host, Shah. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me today. Katerina Militic is an award-winning aquarelle and silk fine art painter, interior designer, and vintage furniture designer. She's founded Indigo and Verdegree, a fine art brand, and she's also a photographer. So I'm really pleased to be speaking with her today about her work. Welcome, Katerina. <laughs> Katerina, welcome. Thank you so much for doing this today. It's lovely to see you as always. Thank you, Sha. It's such a pleasure to be here with you. Pleasure's all mine. So I want to start out with asking you about the name of your brand, Indigo and Vera Degree. How did you come up with a name? A lot of people ask me that question, and I'm glad you're curious about it too. But there is no deeper mystery than I only named my brand after my two favorite pigments, which are indigo and verdigris. Um, But there is a deeper connection that I have with each of these colors. Um, So indigo reminds me, it's my favorite color in the world. Actually, the color is called navy, Mm. but, uh, you know, I would get in all sorts of trouble if I called my business navy, (laughs) right? (laughs) Uh, I think the the name is taken. Um, So it, the deepest blue reminds me of the deep waters of the Adriatic Sea. That is where my family and I went on holiday when I was a little girl and up until I was 21. And also when my children were babies, we took them back there so that they have this connection with the place. Um, And verdigris is the color of copper roofs in Mm. Europe. So throughout Europe and in Belgrade, the city I was born and grew up in, there is a lot of copper roofs which have in the weather turned this lovely shade of uh, light green, you know, that powdery green. Um, So that that reflects who I am. It connects me with history, with my growing up. And uh, I wanted to reflect those connections and ties with history also within my brand. So the name lent itself nicely to that. It's beautiful. It has such a lovely sing Mm -hmm. energy to it as well so now I know you do you've got lots of you wear different hats you're an interior designer you restructure vintage pieces you paint you do a lot of different things Mm -hmm. and I'm always interested in the approach people take Mm -hmm. at the moment I'm watching the Netflix program on Andy Warhol I've always loved him. I I find him more intriguing than his art. I have to say Mm -hmm. he may not want, he he may not agree with it like that, but anyway, he can tell me from the grave if he wants, but (laughs) I've always found him interesting, Mm -hmm. but I just wondered, you know, he takes a different approach. It it appeared so far that his art reflected his life. Mm -hmm. And so I just wondered for you with every peace or whatever what's your approach is it different is it the same it's uh, exactly the same uh, I think artists are big children mm-hmm. and uh, we don't try to escape from it mm-hmm. uh, we try our damn hardest to persist in that endeavor you know to keep our innocence to play and to for all of that to reflect in in everything that we do. So it's art and beyond art, right? So it's beyond the pieces that I paint. Mm -hmm. Uh, Literally everything I do, every conversation I have, every friendship I have, it it is reflective of that uh, deep, um, playful nature inside me. Um, And uh, funny you should say that about Andy Warhol because I have exactly the same uh, feeling as well. Him as a person is so dear to me, even though I'm not the greatest fan of his art. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, I, I have a piece, not an original, of course, but I, I do have a portrait here, the Marilyn one, mm. uh, but it was given to me. It, it's not obviously not an original, but it, it was given to me yeah. and the person was special. So I've kept mm. it 
and it's lovely I've got very fond uh connection to it yes however and I do think a lot of what he did was very interesting Mm -hmm. but I thought yeah I I understand that (laughs) totally um so I what you know what I'm like I like to look things up so I've I've got a quote here (laughs) it's connected to the arts I want to read out and I just want to get your thoughts on this uh from you know an artist like Mm -hmm. yourself um it says you say that your heart is in the past your head in the future but you live in the moment you're collecting this is you this is your quote. You know that. Yeah. So I just want to get your thoughts on this quote. I was wondering when it would twig, it was you. <laughs> You're collecting memories and sharing the best of you with everyone you encounter. I love that, actually. Because mm-hmm. I think we often go through life. Um, we have encounters with people and sometimes they stay and then sometimes they dissipate into mm-hmm. nothingness. I remember Mm -hmm. once meeting a Russian author and it was just random meeting. And uh, I looked them up and Mm -hmm. wow, (laughs) they, you know, they, they do a lot of work, but how, what, what are your thoughts? Why did you say that? What was that all about? As you like, as you know, I like to contemplate life a lot and, um, Everything that I have um, lived in my life was somehow created by me, whether that was conscious or, or not consciously. I have this feeling that it was deliberate, that it had the meaning. Um, and then throughout my life, the events that happened that, that challenged me to grow bigger only deepened that feeling. And I discovered that when I give things deeper meaning, I am able to stay focused on those things, you see, rather than getting lost and rushing ahead of time or staying in the past, which is a lot of, I witnessed that a lot with my friends and even people who I was in relationships with, they they were stuck in the past a lot of the time, right? So my uh, best effort to stay in the present moment is to do do my art and to live by this very saying that you have read. That is beautiful because it really is life imitating Mm. art isn't it that's probably the quintessential life imitator um charlie chaplin said we we think too much we feel too little Mm. and i i love that too because i think we are in our heads i can attest to that Mm -hmm. it's only when i'm still and quiet Mm. that i feel as though i'm feeling and not always but mostly what are your thoughts about that? Wow. I mean, you touched upon someone who is one of my greatest artists of mm. all time. That's Charlie Chaplin. And I know absolutely nothing about his personal life, nor am I interested yeah, I to know. know. Mm. But what he has created as a message for humanity has just left a huge impact on me in my life, right? His ability to smile through difficult times and to make other people smile, it makes me emotional just thinking about it. And he nailed it there. He mm. nailed it with a feeling quote. So I am so so grateful you brought that one to my attention because that is not the one I, I heard before. Wow. Yes. Surprised. And isn't it amazing after all these years, mm-hmm. his work, his art remains some of the most highly revered pieces of art that touches mm-hmm. people's souls. And it's relevant to this day. Absolutely to, relevant. Yes. Yes. Absolutely relevant to this day. Mm-hmm. Isn't that what art is, though? Isn't that why we still go to museums that are about to fall mm-hmm. down and collapse? <laughs> um, <laughs> Isn't that why we, we trust that we'll get yeah. through it? We walk through those holes, we stop and we stare, we feel, we sense. <laughs> Indeed. And I'm, I'm an advocate that everyone is creative. Um, I, as, I, as you know, I'm in contact with many entrepreneurs and leaders. Yes. And uh, I 
like to wake up this feeling mm -hmm. inside them of realization that, hey, what I'm doing is a form of art. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to this idea of disruptive Mm -hmm. uh, being dis <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about that? <laughs> yes, uh, certainly. Um, all my life, I've identified most with the word rebel. I found myself in that word, but um, it somehow didn't fit completely, right? Because rebel, as, defin as per definition, has to stand against something. Right. And I wasn't necessarily standing against something. I was more like rebel without a cause, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, uh, until I discovered the word disruptive and I realized for myself how this word describes me because I could not confine myself to a conventional way of thinking I couldn't even in school I objected to this uh, way you know the educational systems and even higher uh, even more suffer from this that they really need to um imprint on you a certain way of thinking rather than letting you think for yourself mm -hmm. but i i was lucky also to have a couple of professors who were again who were going against the grain in that sense of the traditional education so they let me be the free thinker and one of them was my philosophy teacher and I was so grateful to her because she didn't, she saw something in me that she didn't want to confine, you know, and uh, I mean, she supported everyone in thinking freely, uh, but she was the one who absolutely let you express yourself wow. the way you were feeling the subject, not the way that you were supposed to. Yeah. Right. And uh, so to me, disruptive means forward thinker means being brave to express what you what you think and how you feel being curious questioning things examining things for yourself going out there in front and leading the way uh, so to me all of that fits in the world word this disruptive so i am a disruptive leader and disruptive thinker and i encourage everyone who comes near me to become the same way <laughs> right. So this is interesting. One of my favorite professors was my philosophy professor. Mm -hmm. I was just talking about that with someone as well. And he encouraged me, Dr. Lin, Dr. Mm -hmm. Lin. <laughs> I can't, I don't think he's still around because mm -hmm. he was quite elder, well, elderly. He was older when I was at uni. Mm -hmm. Uh, but Dr. Lin was fantastic. And I remember he used to throw in jokes and he used to say, you know, <laughs> you're going to be in psychology and philosophy, which is what I'm doing now. But he used to say, but don't stay in your head so much. Mm. And he said, um, I got a joke for you. Adam and Eve. Eve ate the apple. What happened to the apple? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. And he said, Adam's apple. <laughs> he was so corny. He was so corny, but it was just, it loosens you up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting yeah. your philosophy professor yes. Yes. was, yeah, encouraged you because Absolutely. mine certainly did. Yes. Wow. She even broke her own rules to support me, which was, it said something. She, she was, um, like feared in school right <laughs> so she had a nickname which wasn't pleasant and I won't repeat it because people just did not like her uh, um, but uh, you see she got me and I wasn't so much ever thinking with my head I was mm. always led by my heart right until much later in life when I forgot that part. And then I was like for five years, like uh, in the maze. <laughs> yes, searching, you need searching. both, you need both, yes, yeah. <laughs> like sometimes I do things that are uh, experimental, yeah. shall we say, yeah. right? No, not in a dangerous way, but in a non-conventional sure. way, right? If it doesn't sit right with me, like I'm at the moment doing something like that in a business, mm -hmm. right? I took many 
classes, courses, and even one-on-one -on -one training. And when something doesn't resonate with my uh, inner guidance, mm -hmm. I just cannot follow it yes. for the love of me. <laughs> it just doesn't sit right with me. Uh, so guess what? I am pretty certain that I couldn't find my way among all of the ways that they are teaching. And now I'm on the path of creating um, my own way. Wow. And I encourage everyone, everyone <laughs> to do the same, to craft their own path, mm -hmm. to follow as far as it resonates, but then be prepared that that last piece of journey that you will have to walk by yourself. Yes, but very good advice. And what an extraordinary journey that was as well. Mm. So, you know, when people say, oh, you know, uni is not for everyone. And, uh, I, you know, I can agree with that because I think some people's paths are different, mm. but you can certainly learn and also gain some type of understanding uh, support there from either your peers or mm. the people who are teaching instructing yeah and that sounds like a really positive experience overall for absolutely you. yes yes it is and even though, though i don't have many friends from that part of my life the ones that i have are true friendships yeah uh, so that is also um, something you know we, we were coming of age Yes, in, absolutely. In yes, those yes. years, right? Brilliant time of life. Yes, yes. 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 A little bit scary and a little bit, you know, but yeah, it was exciting good. overall. Very yeah. exciting overall. Never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now. Thank you for your support. You make this podcast possible. Now, back to the show. So, you know, I like to ask all of my guests. Have you ever had to fly above anything because mm -hmm. of the inquisitive rim? Mm -hmm. And I was fortunate <laughs> enough to be a guest on your channel. And we talked about what all that meant. So yeah. does anything come to mind for you? <laughs> uh, many times I had to, but perhaps the, the one that's most prominent in my mind is the, the most recent experience. And that is four years ago when I had to, um, be a whistleblower in a law firm where I worked. Um, and um, after that whole episode ended, and I was now faced with no job, because what happened was the classic whistleblowing case, right? I, I was, after the whistle was blown, um, I was looked upon as uh, in a completely different way even though I spoke the truth and they all knew I spoke the truth, they were still looking at me as if um, I was the, the one who is responsible for bringing the whole show down, for exposing, you know, for pu pulling the curtain, um, even though they knew there was a, that was the right thing to do. So consequence of that was me. I was prepared to lose my job to do the right thing because, it, and I did, speak with some of my colleagues who were involved and said that I, I will do it even if nobody else stands with me because I had evidence for what I was speaking and I did address and speak spoke directly with the person who was uh, responsible for the misconduct um, but um, at the end of it I was still left with no job right? And this was 2018, in August 2018. Um, my children were just out of university. They were not employed. So it was a scary, scary moment. Um, so I could have gone down the route of thinking, now I have to apply for the same job and do the same thing. But I took this approach of, as you say, higher uh, viewpoint, mm -hmm because that is always available to us. We can always lament and, things, and take, think, um, think that uh, life is happening against us, that somehow something happened, you know, like a warning or like whatever. I would never think like that. I, I'm thinking life landed me a hand here in some way and I need to figure out what is the best way to deal with this situation, right? Um, so I realized that uh, 11 years previously, 11 years ago, when I was going through a divorce, 
I didn't, I wasn't brave enough to take that choice. And here life was giving me the same choice again. And I was like, wow, you know, I wasn't going to miss it this time. No matter what it required of me, I thought I will find the courage to follow my path in life. And that is to be an artist and then to connect all of the other elements of my work that, that I feel is my calling and to bravely live from that calling and to step in that direction so taking the higher perspective there and thinking that this was actually in, going in my favor right that that door couldn't open before the other one was shut completely like there was no going back to the old way so I hope I hope that answers your questions, uh, and I and I hope it helps uh, it more someone than who might be in the same situation. Absolutely. So we, I mean, we, we have an example of courage, mm -hmm. and as you say, brave. You were brave. That that really took. That must have taken for you a leap of faith as well. Absolutely. Huge, Absolutely. huge leap of faith, because where where's the money coming from next? How am I going to support my children? What, yes. are, what am I yes. going to do here? Absolutely. What about my reputation? Mm -hmm. These are all mm -hmm. linked to the root chakra and grounding us mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. society and the earth. And when the root is uprooted, it's another chance for us to plant our seeds elsewhere, I believe. And mm -hmm. that's exactly what you did. That root was uprooted for good reasons yes. you know now you could have as you say you could have taken a whole different path yes however it would have compromised your integrity yes that yes, was that indeed. seems clear and you weren't prepared to do that no that is never an option and uh, i loved then afterwards a couple of years later i read something that uh, paulo coelho wrote um, on his uh, on his blog because I follow I follow his uh, work and uh, I love what he puts out there that uh, he said um, that uh, people who are left with no choice they they are always the forward the the front runners in everything and I uh, there were people arguing with him saying we always have the have choice, Mr. Coelho, you know, and I, I saw where they're coming from, right? Yes. Of course, we always have a choice. Yeah. But for me in that moment, that other choice was absolutely not an option I would consider. Yes. So I didn't have a choice right. but to be yes. brave and to yeah. take the road I did. That was your choice. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. yeah, of course, we always have a choice. But for you, that wasn't a, one of your choices. No, it wasn't yeah. my option. <laughs> no, it wasn't an option for you. No. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, wonderful. Thank you for that. Mm. Because I think it, it took so much courage. Mm. And I would think a lot of that courage fuels you to mm -hmm. help other people yes. as well. It, it puts everything in context, really. Mm. Um, and um, I, I don't think I'm a mentor. Um, I oh, okay. used to consider myself a coach up until maybe four oh. weeks ago when we last spoke. And after that, another rethink. And as you know, I mean, I evolve in life. And mm -hmm. as I evolve, um, I cannot then keep, um, I, I no longer felt that I'm identifying with the word coach. Right. Right. Um, so I thought, what is the better word? And the yeah, word yeah. leader to me is a better word. Okay. That is that is who I am. And I help other people to lead from that place of of heart because um, at the end of the day, the aim in life is to feel fulfilled in in this lifetime. Mm. Right. If we are missing that fulfillment, if we are missing the beauty that people are talking about, that all the poets are, are, have written, you know, beautiful, beautiful uh, poems and volumes, songs, about, volumes, yeah, volumes, volumes, <laughs> volumes, even in the the most desperate of situations, they held on to that 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 hope and that beauty, and they saw it in people, in other people. 
you have to take inspiration from that if nothing else right but it is beyond that you can you have to realize that you are choosing to feel disempowered you are choosing to stay disconnected from the power of all there is this energy that created the world is available to you mm. right and you based on the choices you made like, like we said before they they can become deliberate rather than automatic choices that you are making yes so when you live on autopilot there's no way you have access to the fulfillment that you yeah. came here to live Absolutely. you were born to live life of uh, joy and you were born to help humanity reach another level right the calling that we have here is big mm. and it is also it is in the nature it is playful and it is light right so it's not this somber event like uh, in all <laughs> seriousness no no it's playful but it also instructs you to hold yourself to this higher standard to this bigger picture and to play your part to play to play not to observe how other people are uh, you know, having fun <laughs> with life, but to involve, get involved to participate in your life yes. to the fullest, to the fullest. And make no mistake, every one of us has their own unique mission to bring into the world. So mine is no more brilliant than, than Shah's right. is, and, and hers isn't more brilliant than yours. Yes. Right? That's right. We can all get to it. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, comparison is the ego. It's an ego mm -hmm. state. And also, I think you have to have a strong ego to be a leader because mm -hmm. you have to be, ego is okay. I think yes, people, absolutely. people think, but, you know, I think a, <laughs> a, a very destructive ego is yes. different. That's very yes. different. Yes. Coaching is different. And mm -hmm. I'm certainly one when, when coaching got really big mm -hmm. in the nineties, mm -hmm. I did push against it because mm -hmm. I spent all these years uh, learning psychology and how to be a psychotherapist. And, mm -hmm. and, and then people were setting up with no experience, no courses, nothing saying, I'm going to coach you. Mm -hmm. And it was only after a couple of weeks, um, I spoke to someone who was a coach and I realized, hold on they actually can contribute because it's a different approach. Yes. yes. So I think when we relax our ego and our, you know, parameters around what we think, I saw someone the other day put something, uh, a question in uh, the psychology section saying, uh, which part of the brain uh, do you most hate the name of? And somebody put the amygdalas, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, um, and then somebody put, you know, I, I can't really understand this question mm -hmm. other, other than you trying to uh, purport that you know all the brain parts or something to the person who yeah. tweet, you know, who put it in. <laughs> and I just thought, well, you know what? we can all have different perspectives. Yes, yes. That was the only negative comment as such. Mm -hmm. However, what was the purpose of the question? <laughs> so why are we judging the names of the brains? <laughs> I guess this is bored today. Um, so the e that, that was a bit of an ego, you know, post. Mm -hmm. However, I found that it could be educating as well. Yes. So somebody who didn't know about the parts of the brain could look up the amygdala mm -hmm. and find out about how it's connected mm. to emotions and all sorts of things. Yes. And that might spark their interest to learn more about psychology yeah. and maybe even study exactly. and maybe even become a scientist. So you just never know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what you're saying is everybody has a purpose. I believe mm -hmm. that too. Everybody will bring yes. something to the world. Yes. Um, and it's up to us not to necessarily judge it, Yes, I find that I judge if it's evil, if mm -hmm. it's horrific, if mm -hmm. they're hurting people, mm -hmm. then that for me is unacceptable. Right. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't call it judging. Of course, I wouldn't condone it. Um, but I, I have a different approach to that because um, it, it is clear 
that we cannot we cannot extract evil with with evil right right well we you see a psychologist approach especially a humanistic approach would be that you know that's not good so that's a judgment <laughs> that's a judgment yes you yes. killed people well, that's good has good. to be in comparison with something with something else right is yeah. to say i am better than well the comparison yeah. is right is let people live <laughs> you know why are you killing oh, people? absolutely that's yeah. what uh, that is a no-go you absolutely. cannot uh, infringe upon someone else's freedoms of choice right so that is absolutely um a no-go and that's a however how we deal with it as a society there's a lot to be desired right totally different absolutely even in our focus and and everything else like are we helping that situation or are we making it worse so yeah confusing but the situation itself absolutely situation itself about killing that's a judgment you kill people that's wrong don't do it Hmm. that's a judgment Uh, you know so I say judgment because for me I judge and Mm -hmm. I can't change that that's a judgment that's how I see yeah that's how I see it yeah yes Yes, and so, it doesn't have to have a negative meaning to it, right? That is then something I don't see it as a negative. Um, yeah. In 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 that act, if if right, you're right. condemning something that isn't good and, and absolutely that is you know destroying life that yeah. isn't pro life, uh, of course, then yeah, call it judging, and and I am with you. Yeah. I am with you there as well. I I, I mean absolutely. Uh, we didn't come here to do something against humanity Absolutely, to destroy right? human life yes. but yes. as you, but i do agree as you say though it, it it takes a wider stance because we could say that about animals <laughs> and then we get into people who eat animals so we won't go into all that but <laughs> you see it all has a wider context yes and i think that's what buddha and all the other sort of free thinkers, the people who were trying to get us to to shrink, that's where the word shrink comes from, Mm -hmm. shrink our ego. Yes. Uh, Then Mm -hmm. the people who are trying still through all their works to help us do that, um, I find it's helpful to reflect and maybe understand that we have a Mm -hmm. higher or bigger, perhaps even a bigger um I don't know if purpose is the word but Mm -hmm. wherever we go whatever calling I find that yes speaks to me more bigger calling yes I don't know if everyone does an assignment yes perhaps it's that that that, uh, yes that we were born with and of course it has to be for benefit of everyone it has to be and therefore the thing that is against that is just isn't isn't it's not helpful no it's not helpful it isn't in accordance with our nature it Mm. isn't we are not aligned with it Mm. but we cannot fight it the same way it is uh, spewing whatever it is doing so you know we have to be united in our view of understanding Mm -hmm. that yeah isolating it and uh, you know not not uh, feel the need to destroy it because that would be wrong it just it wouldn't it it just the way how we have society organized there would be much destruction and and innocent life lost before we arrive to the solution that way absolutely and there is now isn't there so which which brings me to my next sort of question because mm-hmm. we got very philosophical there which was good we did yeah um, i wanted to chip in another thing with yeah, the ego yeah, with the yeah, ego yes so ego is necessary part of us it like we always. cannot eliminate That's it right. uh, but i have given my ego a nice job to do right it can advise me if i look good you know and we can stand in the mirror and say okay you know this is it can help me make choices as to what i'm wearing how i'm appearing here 
And that's as far as it goes. Every other choice is made from another part of me. <laughs> it comes directly from um, from the place of, of <laughs> oneness and unity, like that. right? My ego doesn't have a say in those decisions like that, right? It can just sit there. It, it done its job. It made me look, you know, good. And that's it. So that's I as far as that. I absolutely love that. And I can actually feel Freud stirring in his grave going, <laughs> I need to get her on my couch. I need to tell her about the superego. I need yeah. to tell her. <laughs> he would think that, yes, that I am a lost cause. Probably. Well, no, not a lost cause. He would, he would love, he would love it. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> but I like that. I love that. And yes, I think it's good, you know, in, with hypnotherapy, we do something called parts therapy. <laughs> so I like the fact that your ego, it has been compartmentalized in a way mm -hmm. and you gave it a job. Brilliant yes, idea. That's it. It I has love it. Purpose. <laughs> I love it. I like when people embrace the ego because everybody thinks that the ego is a bad thing and mm -hmm. it isn't it's what we do with the ego that yes, can be it's bad a, yeah. it's like everybody thinks narcissism is bad and mm -hmm. or there's lots of videos on narcissism yes. everyone has a narcissistic part to them Absolutely. otherwise we wouldn't be surviving mm -hmm. so we have to put things in their place yes yeah. and the ego needs its place and you've given it a really good place I love it. <laughs> well that, I love that's it. where these conversations help don't they we we're talking about how we are defining things exactly. that is just our perspective exactly. you have I yours always... i have mine the more perspective we can gather together and have a look at this one thing from so many different angles the richer we are and the better experience okay. we all Absolutely. have. Absolutely. Right? I always say these are my thoughts, my opinions, yes. my th <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because I know everybody will have their own and that's great. I may not agree. You may not agree, but a lot of what we're talking about may resonate with people, mm -hmm. I believe, and mm -hmm. will help them to think a different way. I wanted to ask you as well, if you could live in any particular decade, past or present or future, what would it be? <laughs> well, years ago, I would have said uh, I would I romanticize the past, you know, because that's what, what I thought all the great thinkers, all the great mm. poets that we mentioned before and artists lived in that era. But I did figure out life wasn't much, uh, you know, simpler or easier necessarily in those days. Um, and now, in all honesty, I have to say that there isn't uh, any other time that I would have wanted to experience more than this lifetime that I am experiencing right now. Right. So this uh, this to me is uh, where my soul has traveled the furthest and where I feel most like, you know, the fullest expression of me in this moment. It's not the final and fullest, completest version of me, but uh, yes, it feels really good. So yeah, I wouldn't change it. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, email us at inquire at theinquisitiverin.com. That's E-N-Q-U-I-R-E -E at theinquisitiverin.com. Be sure to check all social media, especially the Facebook page, for new topics being discussed. And if you can contribute, please let us know so you can be a guest on the show. Now, back to the show. Do you ever get a sense of a past life or do you ever get senses of, you know, you've been here before, you felt it before? Well, you get those things, I get those things just in moments, in, in certain moments, like if I'm visiting a, a, a town where I was never before, you know, suddenly have this feeling like it just goes through me, like as if I know this scene that I'm observing in front of me. So that has happened many times, yeah. but I never connected the two to the past life experience. I know you're currently running uh, some... Uh groups on Facebook is it how do you connect with people and what's it for so our listeners right. know 
I have two groups and uh, one is uh, running creative workshops every Monday. It is a free group and uh, everything that my private clients benefit from, I bring about then those creative workshops. Mm. So my, my private clients only get the benefit of working one-to-one with me, yeah. you see. But in that group, everything that the best and the fullest of what I do is shared there. Um, so people have the opportunity to come live in a, in, to the class with me. And um, I teach them and I discuss with them and I get out of them this how to connect this playful nature that I talked about yeah. before mm-hmm. with the highest purpose that mm-hmm. they have in, in life uh, in order to create a masterpiece. And the masterpiece is themselves in the first place. The masterpiece is their life and work. And the masterpiece is also their legacy, Mm -hmm. right? So it's actually something tangible that they create uh, in this process, in discovering um, and taking back all the power that they have. So I have all variety of leaders there, creative um, people, creative thinkers, and also those who are curious about waking up and owning their creativity. Um, And the other community that I have is is on LinkedIn. And that one is dedicated to friendships, to building friendships, right? Not networking per se, Mm -hmm. starting with friendships, because I find that friendships is absolutely the basis, the foundation of everything good. Every great relationship I had whether it was platonic relationship, you know, romantic relationship, business relationship of any kind, whether they worked with me or I worked with them, started off as friendship. So I, I saw a common thread there and um, really enjoyed that experience. So every Friday we meet up there and have a, a 20 minutes time out just for friendship. And whatever wants to transpire out of that, it will. If it's business, well, it's business, you know, (laughs) if it's just get together as friends and talk about things that, you know, people are just brushing under the carpet Mm. or they have this uh, judgmental approach, you know, like, like uh, my opinion is right (laughs) and and someone else isn't like those people not open for conversation. Obviously, they're just looking tribe to to identify with that idea and then they they go against other tribes into you know pursuit on the internet wars and whatever they're doing but that's amazing though both so both groups created one on facebook and then you've got the linkedin on friday at noon as you said Mm -hmm. brilliant Mm -hmm. stuff so all the links will be there Why do you think people Mm -hmm. are drawn to be part of tribes and groups and they're looking for their tribes and they're Mm -hmm. looking for that? For me, it's like it's almost like a family structure they're looking for. But what are your thoughts about that? My thoughts are I can only connect with one individual at a time. I, I cannot group people, even if they identify with the same things. I cannot put them all in the same basket. I see them as individuals and I relate to them as individuals. That's how I build relationships. Mm-hmm. And surprise, surprise, I don't, I did not find a tribe where I thought I fitted right. ever, <laughs> right? <laughs> It's not to say that I, you know, dislike them in any right. way. It just did not resonate with me mm-hmm. enough to say, you know, I am all of that. Because to me, I feel I am that. And then there is more to, to me. Absolutely. So I, I, I don't, my spirit doesn't want to be, uh, mm-hmm. you know, restricted in that mm-hmm. way to find, um, to express itself in another free way. And if, mm-hmm. you know, two months down the line, wants to call itself something else, I would have to follow. (laughs) 
I love that. And, you know, listeners, I'm in no way denigrating sororities, fraternities or groups or tribes. You do what you feel is right and what you're drawn to. In fact, a lot of my friends from uni belong to sororities, fraternities, and they've got the absolute best experience. They've had the best experience. They're friends for life. It, it really is a very positive thing. Yes. Is what I'm saying. They really gain business, um, lifelong friendships. Their families get together. It's amazing stuff. And that is great. And yeah. that's great for them. But we're not all draw. And the only reason I'm bringing this up and I want to uh, wanted to ask Katerina about it, is this life is about what you're doing. And it's okay, it is okay if you don't feel a connection with a group or a tribe of people or a business even, mm. you know, or a company. You know how sometimes we say, oh, I don't like that company. Mm. There will be something that, reson that doesn't resonate. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. Yes. And, and that's why I'm bringing it up. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with you. No, I always say if if something is serving you, you have absolutely every reason to pursue that avenue. Um, I'm only uh, talking about when something stops serving us yes. and we persist going down that route. You know, I, I'm I am all in favor of being absolutely honest with myself and saying you know what, this resonated five, 10 years ago, but it no longer does. Absolutely. So, you know, I was a member of photo society, photographic society, oh. and I traveled with them and was a member and for 12 years, oh, you know, wow. participated in competitions. I was on the panel uh, uh, with, with them. But when it came to an end, I didn't hold on. I didn't now think I have to stay here till, till I die, you know? Uh, because yes, when, when I feel that my journey is calling me in another direction, or I just need to expand and there is no more room to hold on to that. I, I, that's a great experience. And I would say, absolutely, you know, join, join uh, that kind of, uh, have that experience for yourself, but don't hold yourself beyond it serving you yes and your purpose in life your what you feel is your calling brilliant advice mm -hmm. excellent advice for people and it's okay whatever path we're on is fine so would you say you're doing your life's work absolutely yes i could uh, absolutely sleep at night right when i worked in that law firm i knew that there is more that i ought to be doing um, and uh, I approached it from, from within there. I offered, um, I, I told them they're not using all of my capacity. So mm -hmm. I offered to, uh, because I thought if I'm here, I might as well go all the way. So I offered to get, um, you know, degree where they needed to fill the gap where they needed oh. to. And I, you know, invited them in, to support me in that journey they weren't interested. And I was thinking, oh, I, I need to get out of here. But like, I, I couldn't get out until life landed me a hand through that experience then that, you know. That is such a teaching uh, moment. Yes. That is. Yes, it, yes. And I'm grateful it was only five years that mm -hmm. I worked there. Mm -hmm right? Uh, knowing me, this could have been like 12 years, <laughs> right? Well, I could have people. just signed off 12 years of my life uh, because it was good enough. And I think the good enough and safe enough, like my, my, while my children were in university and I was, uh, as a single parent, had to, uh, you know, look after myself, look after the household and help support them, um, you know, I, I thought I'm doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. That is the thing, you know, in every, it ticked every box of that. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Apart from that box in my heart, knew like, yeah, you need to be doing more than this, <laughs> right? right? You're not doing all that you have to be doing in this mm -hmm. lifetime. That is a teaching moment, but not just for you, for anybody who's watching or listening to this now, you may be in that situation now. You may be in something for 10, 12 years, 
and you know deep in your heart you've outgrown it or perhaps they've outgrown you Let, mm-hmm. let's put it both ways maybe yeah. they're moving up and you can't move on with them mm-hmm. so you know an opportunity is being presented to you now if you've got that feeling it's now mm. and if you don't take it the opportunity will still present itself yes. but perhaps in a way that puts you in a compromising position mm-hmm. and you've got to then work your way out i have found in life if i don't listen to those cues yes. then i find whoop something happens something goes something does and that's it yeah they don't stop happening they they're just like exactly. it gets louder and clearer yes. <laughs> yeah that's a good way to put it it gets louder and clearer absolutely <laughs> and then before you know it that's it where your your opportunity your choices are dwindling down mm-hmm. and then you've got maybe a couple of choices and that's it mm-hmm. and if you listened earlier Yes. And, you know, they are, there's a proponent, you know, people will say, well, it's a part of the journey. I, I would agree with that as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Even if you do wait, even if it, mm-hmm. it's all a part of your life it lessons, is. It is. your journey. But I would like to own that I made it longer than necessary. <laughs> I had to confirm the lesson a few times. Yes, we, I think we all, we've all had that, Katerina. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I just didn't listen. I wasn't ready. And that was it, funnily enough. Um, so what the bird's eye view, because we're almost at the end now. Um, is there anything you change about life? No, <laughs> again, because I'm also one of those who does believe that uh, all of that served a purpose. Um, and sometimes it took me five years to arrive at the lesson that that mm. previous experience was offering, right? But, but in all honesty, in all the, the richness of that lesson, it keeps coming. So I wouldn't like to have it any different way, mm. right, than, than what it was. Because it, it served me then even if it was hard and difficult situation, I came out the other side, I've rebuilt my life, I have found myself in a way that that connected all of these different pieces of me. And now I'm feeling so comfortable and happy. But I I still draw from those lessons, you see, as I said, they, they keep coming, like, two months from now, I might have another realization what that experience really was for and what it taught me so excellent yes. excellent point that is really I guess, oh gosh the gems keep coming here <laughs> um you know because that is brilliant you're right even though we we sat here today we're talking about this uh, in the future you could think oh actually I learned mm-hmm. this that happens all the time mm-hmm Absolutely. And even people in therapy, that can happen. You know, people often say, why are people in therapy for so long? <laughs> mm-hmm. And I, I have to say, I will give that answer. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes it takes a while for, for the light bulb to go on. Mm-hmm. And somebody could be, you know, I, I always have this image, the Bob Dylan video where he's holding up the, I don't know if you remember this, um, he's holding up the place cards. Many people have replicated that video, but it's Bob Dylan, I can't remember mm-hmm. the name of it. And so people are holding up all the signs for you. Everybody you meet mm-hmm. randomly are giving you these messages yeah. Yeah. and you're going, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. you're mm-hmm. pretend you didn't see it yes not see a thing. yeah and then something happens and mm-hmm. then you say oh my goodness I can no longer deny it I yeah. see it I see it and you can't unsee it <laughs> and people have been telling you and people have tried to say or yes. and I don't mean that people are always nice there might be people who treat you horribly at work Mm. that's a sign mm. as well that's a sign that you may be in the wrong space mm-hmm. or that you may need to look at yourself too and how mm. you take things on board so yeah life's about lessons um so what makes your heart sing 
yeah. life <laughs> just being alive um having connections being able to have this type of conversation mm -hmm. with everyone with people in my family with my friends with people who are guests on my podcast from just going into the the deepest most fertile soil of life and exploring there playing there with that molding it into this meaning right because we're not handed meaning on a plate we we create it um, as we traveled through life mm -hmm. and we have a choice you know if we want to create a meaning that's just like you know this is not inspiring me or anybody else and you know who would want to be would you like to be with a friend who is like that would you want to be with the partner a long-term ter relationship with somebody who is like that mm -hmm. then you have to realize you know this this the changes really begin within when you when you embody more and more of who you really are when you embrace all of that and just say you know i don't care if if anyone else gets it or doesn't get it i get me i get me right and you start expressing that and you see that other people will suddenly start discovering hey this is inside me as well it's not just inside her and him and you know yes yes friends this is inside all of us the magic the brilliance the genius and in, in as many different forms as, as you can imagine you have your unique yeah. gifts inside you play with them explore share them bring them into the world so yeah perfect that's what makes me so excited about that, that. is very even as you describe <laughs> it very exciting so we're going to put a fork in it we're going to get our far out random question here i have my bowl here so i don't want people to, oh my green screen's not okay so here we go oh okay what doesn't exist but should <laughs> <laughs> What doesn't exist, but should? Hmm. Let's see, how can we answer this creatively in a, in a creative way? <laughs> Life is so full of um, hidden meanings. There are hidden messages in everything that we see. And that's already there, though. That isn't uh, something that doesn't exist. It's just, I hope that Makes more eyes can be seeing this magic of life, right? I don't know how to put that in words. <laughs> no, I like it. It's good. You know what? I'm, I suppose I'm, I'm more... Uh, I what I'm thinking of is something more tangible, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wish, is there, maybe you know, is there a light <laughs> that replicates sunlight? Ooh. <laughs> you know, and, and it, this only because I'm doing all these Zooms and the room I'm in, mm. it has a skylight, mm -hmm. but it, I don't have enough no frontal light and mm -hmm. so if I could find a light mm -hmm. listeners tell me what exists <laughs> that replicates sunlight that I could put in front of me <laughs> I told you these questions are really random they're far out random <laughs> questions Katarina thank you so much for joining me today it's been awesome. a pleasure as always it was a pleasure to be a guest and to share these conversations on, on both our platforms it, it's really I think that is our contribution um, to making the world better to making it more accessible to more people so, I think so yeah. Thanks so much for listening today. Make sure you subscribe and follow on all streaming platforms. Leave me a comment and also let me know if there's any particular topics you'd like me to discuss. See you next time.